Gentlemen, ladies, watchers of the Grass Factor, to all of y'all, what's up, YouTube? It is July the 15th, 2018, the weekly lawn and garden show coming to you live from the side of my kitchen featuring my cat who's hanging out what's up everybody man it is hot it's summertime depending on where you are in the country you're in the midst of the worst drought up in the northeast apparently they're uh, struggling but they're supposed to be getting some rain moving through down here down south we got rain coming next week bring things up I don't know what's going on in the Midwest. Every time I look over there towards like Arkansas and west of there, those poor dudes are struggling. So just like every week, you know what goes on? Roll call. We'll jump in the chat here and give a big what's up to everybody. Big Paul, Paul Outlaw, my man. I just text you back. I haven't watched all your video yet. I got about five minutes into it, and then I had to start this. Velvet Hammer, what's happening? You having fun up there, buddy? I hope your season is going well. I'm glad to see your name. It's been a little bit. KDO, uh, could be for you, not for me, sir. Grass Daddy's, man, your phone's dying. Somebody get that man a portable charging pack. CW, oh, Charlie Willis, what's up, my man? Richard N. in the Discord. What's going on, my man? Jay Wyrick, how are you? John Ware, Esther Lucan. Man, that's a newer name, Esther. I'm not sure I'm used to seeing your name in here a lot. RBL Jackson, what's going on, my man? How are you down there in Tejas? Chris Voigt? Chris, if you send me another one of those emails, I tell you what, you're going to be in T-R-O-U-B-L-E, my friend. Lambert, how are you, sir? Popo and son, Fabian Bartalos. What's up to the cat? Alfred, how are you, good sir? The Green Dog Raider in the house. Helping out in the chat. Lawnscapes of America, what's going on? Mr. Myers, the Greener Lawn. Hey, man, glad you're here. Brian Quick, out there in Missouri. Kyle Ben, how? Hey, man, thanks. I appreciate that. This is one of the. Uh, the Japanese fear the beard shirts my wife designed. She's nifty like that, cooler than I am. Jay Beasy, what's up, Weezy? How are you, good sir? Hey, man, I'm glad you're taking a little break from mowing there, RBL. Michael Lane, what's up, man? No, you know, yeah, it kind of is, really. You know, Connor Ward, he's lawn rebel with the mustache, and then we got fear the beard with the grass factor. Floyd, how are you, good sir? Fabian, we're in Virginia. Got some light rain, stray shower the first time in two weeks. You need it. Ronald Parrish, I agree, buddy. Mr. Myers, Jim Martin, I need a professional rain dancer. Yeah. Matt Kosinski, what's happening? Oh, my man, Carl Barcar. Harry, North Carolina. How are you, big sir? Congrats to France. Mark Machione, how are you, good sir? Thanks for tuning in. Look at, hey, Paul, everybody's looking for your email address. I had to give someone your phone number the other day. I hope you don't mind, but I handed it out like it was hot. Brian Reese, how are you? Justin Murray, Tim, Jim, Steve Wright, Paul, Bill, Rob Wright, Rob Hawkins, Shane North, Pithy and Riddled and Seymour. What's up, my man? Zach Picks, CT Garden Girl, welcome back. RBA Long Love, man. Woo! Yeah, Rob, I have been. I've been super busy, as a matter of fact. But um, I really, really, I wanted to take a little bit of a break from making YouTube videos, just because they take so much time to do. And then I'd get a little bit of motivation to make a new video, and then I'd become overwhelmed with something at work. And anyway, I wanted to take a little bit of a break. Um, I actually sold my old camera, got a new camera, and. Uh, Anyway, I'm preparing. I've got a special week that's coming up in front of me. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get a video out this week, but probably will the following week. And it's going to be super special because we're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff. So anyway, that'll be really cool because I'm going to be doing some traveling and getting some 
getting some good stuff for the travel. We got a fear of the bear. Oh, John Pinkerton, Jay Pink, that's unnecessary. For those of you that don't know, Jay Pink, Airport Beer Fund, John Pinkerton is the owner of That One Cupcake Place in Hiawatha, Iowa, up there in Canada. So far away. So far away. But yeah, man, I'm making it. So I'm, I'm excited for this week has uh, this week has to come up. It's going to be good stuff. And I, I'll announce it with a video. I'm not going to tell anybody just yet. Uh, got some heat stress, but not as much as I thought I had this time of year. But the Biost Impact helped out a lot. RGSU, we did that. Jerry ate all the rest of the micros as well. Neighbors, jelly. That's right, Fabian. Keep them, keep them on their toes. They don't know what's going on. You know, it's kind of interesting. You know, everybody was talking about this, and you know, people were sending me pictures of what their fescue looks like this time of year. And um, you know, the fescue here at my yard is actually looking really, really good. I haven't mowed it in five weeks, um, and it's pegged at about five inches tall. It's uh, still super green, and uh, you know, a little leggy. Looks a, a little unkempt, a little messy, but I mean, color's good. No disease in it. Can't be happy. I haven't put the first thing of water on. In fact, I didn't even water on it when I seeded the freaking thing. I just sprayed it with Roundup, aerated it, and then seeded it, and uh, put just a, a little minimal program on it at best after that. So it's doing it. Chris Gibson, thank you, Gibby, my man. I, I appreciate that. Everybody's lining me up on the air, airport phone. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with the with the GIF files that were released in? The Discord, for those of you that don't know, hey, can someone in the Discord post the uh, link to the Discord and I will paste it in the chat. Someone shoot me a link uh, in the Discord or like a tiny URL or something and I will post it in the chat. Um, so, where was I? Let me get back to the chat, see what's going on. Idaho, we got more people in Idaho here. What's going on, man? Milo shortage nationwide? Uh, apparently it is. You know, typically we can find it down here in the South because it's not as popular kind of where I am in the country. Um, but I would say most places around here, like Nashville and across the mountain into Asheville, North Carolina, both those places would probably be out. It seems to be more popular. I don't know why it isn't here in Knoxville. It's the Discord guy's fault. That's right. <laughs> Well, hey, James Chavez, I, I, I appreciate you tuning into the live show. We have a lot of fun here. We get we get a little wild sometimes, but, you know, for the most part, we're, we're doing pretty good. We got good weather up in North Dakota, low 48 degrees on Monday night. That's unreal. I love this. I love this. Floyd Epperson has a great question. I understand the difference between liquid humic acid and granular humic acid, but break it down. Is all humic acid the same? I'm sure there is a difference. Yes and no. So, you know, most humic acid is going to be prepared pretty much the same way. So they do a high pH extraction of source material. Source material can, strange, can range from peat to linardite shale to uh, organic matter, compost, biosolids. All of it contains humic acids, but they're contained in varying degrees of concentration. So your source material can have a little bit of an influence on your humic acid percentage, but you know, if you're at a six or 12% humic acid, that's about where you need to be. So then at that point, it is um, how long it is reacted will tend to have an influence, uh, yeah, an influence on the quality of the material. So, um, like there's there's a, a significant amount of carbon that exists in linardite shale, and you want to you want to take up as much of that carbon and move it with you as possible. Uh, some people want it really 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 re refined, um, just because of their you know tank setup or nozzles on their boom, and then other people want um, you know more of that you know carbon you know lignin mix in there and want it you know a little with a little meat in it. Um, because, you know, again, if you're using it as an extender of your nitrogen or a delivery system of your nitrogen, those lignans and additional amounts of carbon in that humic acid can extend that release of your inputs. There we go. Uh, and then sometimes what you'll also find is 
it's really weird how this happened, Floyd, but there are some companies like down in Florida, the big one, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but what they do is they get it to a liquid and then they spray dry it onto a hot bed and allow all the water to evaporate and then they have a dried humic acid. And then what they do is then reconstitute it back in water. So it's no longer in solution, it's in suspension. And I typically would recommend staying away from that um, because once it's out of solution, it's really hard for it to go back into solution. Even though they say it completely dissolves, it really doesn't. And, uh, and then again, you cook out all those lignans and things that were previously in there. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, S. Myers ordered some GCI turf grass seed. There you go. Can't go wrong with that, Mr. Myers. Future former law noob, what's going on, man? How's everything going over there? Uh, looks like somebody sent over the link to that. So I will copy and paste this into the chat. If anybody wants to get wild over in the Discord, there is the invite link. Um, my new camera that I got is the Canon, Canon M50. That was at the recommendation of, oh, Alan, hang the lawn care nut. Got the Canon M50. I'm excited about it. Nobody in Louisiana knows what it is. Yard mama, that's kind of a thing. Like, it's funny. There's a ton of people that know what it is. And then there's an equal number of people that have no idea what it is. So it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's the best known unknown. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, when your FERC goes to distribution, please make sure you get it to Central Virginia. I'll give it my best, RVA. I sure will. Uh, in the meantime, when our FERC is going to initially be distributed by John Perry with Green County Fertilizer. So um, you don't have to worry about it going to distribution because you'll be able to call Green County Fertilizer and order our FERC all day long. Um, man. Jump down too fast, too soon. Let me get here. Hey, Matt, what did you use before RGS? So um, and originally, I used to use a lot of um, a product called, what was it? It was called Diamond Grow. Diamond Grow Humic Acid was the main one that I used. And this is one of those ones that was in suspension, not in solution, that came out of that group out of Florida. Um, it was relatively cheap, uh, you know, for professional applicators, you know, it's, it's, it's much more econo economical for me to run RGS than it was that because I was paying more for the diamond coat than I was for the RGS, which is humic and kelp. And I was only getting humic with the diamond grow. And, um, and then uh, I had played a little bit with kelp, not extensively. I probably only sprayed 20 acres of kelp. I was not spraying humic acid and kelp in conjunction with one another. Uh, so that was a little bit of a game changer for me. I was buying a raw powdered kelp. Um, it was from somewhere in the Northeast, maybe out of Pennsylvania, can't recall. Um, and I also used a lot of Cytogro, which is just super rich in cytokinins. Um, I also used the ENC liquid fertilizer line out of uh, Helena. Uh, was one of the one of the big ones I used, and th their big thing was that you know yeah they have a micronutrient push as well as um, amino acid and vitamin complexes to help give you that added push. But uh, RGS for the most part has replaced all of that for me just due to the sheer results I've gotten. Hey Jim, oh man, I hate that, buddy. I hate that for you. I know that's tough. I'm on the fence for what to seed, choose this year when I'm seeding, thinking GCI turf seed would be good, but not sure how it would look in my existing lawn. Mark, matching on what's your existing lawn. If you're dealing with fescue and you're going to seed into it with fescue, um, as long as it's not Kentucky 31, what Pete is going to be uh, passing out is going to be good, good stuff and will blend in well. I'd like to kill all my weeds until September, October, and blast them now and risk divorce. Future lawn. <laughs> Man, I'd blast them now. Just, hey, hey, listen, just do the damage one time, get it over with, be done with it, and then you'll be good to go. And, uh, you know, beg for forgiveness, of course. Bring on the early fall weather. I'm with you. Uh, let's see. Mostly perennial rye, bluegrass, and a little fescue. Um, what you're going to see happen, Mark, is that you'll have some patches of uh, bluegrass that will form where the fescue will never really do well in it. 
uh, for the most part, it's going to blend in really well. Uh, it's not, it's not going to be perfectly uniform like a monoculture stand of turf grass would be, but uh, it's going to look pretty nice. I've seen the amazing benefits from microgreens, seeing the amazing grain from this product. Why should I use an MPK fur versus a microgreen if I'm happy with the result? Okay, HD movie source. This is pretty interesting. John I did a, a wonderful presentation on this, and um, I'm trying to remember the name of the analogy he used. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Whoa, that was not it. Um, there is a principle that deals with, so for instance, say you're dealing with a barrel, right? And each slat of the barrel is one of the key 13 needed nutrients for turf to perform. So, you know, you've got three in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and those would be the three most important, right? And then you have the rest of them, which would be, you know, your uh, 10 others that would be needed in microscopic amounts compared to your N, P, and K based on what the plant is going to utilize fastest. So what is happening is um, as, your, as your micronutrients level increase and your NPK levels decrease, all of a sudden it can let all of the water out of the barrel. And you know all that water coming out of the barrel will reflect ultimately in color loss. So you have to supplement everything in order for that plant to stay in peak position. Um, now, one of the things you can typically get away with without supplementing is usually phosphorus, especially where you are in North Carolina. There's always going to be probably enough phosphorus in the soil for what you're trying to do. Um, but again, it could be one of those things you want to supplement a little bit occasionally. Uh, same thing with your MP and K is, is that, you know, you don't necessarily have to get out there and slam it. But in order to keep it actively growing in peak condition where it's going to utilize those micronutrients you're applying, you also have to apply your NPK. So you can't trade one for the other. They're all used to impact the performance of the turf grass. If you take away one or the other, eventually the plant will begin to suffer because of it. Looking to buy a sprayer, should I go with a rig setup or a zero turn? If you're looking to buy a sprayer, man, uh, you got to start with a skid sprayer. Um, I love my permagreen and you know I got it as quick as I could, but you have to start with the skid sprayer because there's nothing more versatile. You can always make money with a skid sprayer. Matt, seeing more and more dollar spot coming out. Humid, rainy, hot. Thought it was at bay. Guess not. Put the older scotch grain there down at three apps Milo this year. Can I do another at Milo? Party girl, shoot me some pictures of that. I'm not convinced it's dollar spot at this point. It's late in the year and as hot as it is, it's past its prime for dollar spot. I'm thinking more along the lines that you could be dealing with pythium. So we will see. Shoot me some pictures if you don't mind. Uh, I got a few areas in my turf type tall fescue yard with Bermuda grass. The areas are six foot by six foot. Going to kill it with Roundup. When should I start killing it? I'm in Northern Virginia. Uh, I would probably start like the first week of August, something like that. Michael Moore is still on tour cleanup. Man, my goodness. Michael and I got to hang out last night, I hung out with him and his lovely wife. We had an awesome time on that back patio. Nicholas, what's going on? How are you, good sir? Whoa, we jumped down way too far. What is this? Steve Willie! <laughs> Thank you, good sir. All right. Uh, oh, I went up too far that time. Let's see here. What's the preferred way to bring a lawn out of dormancy, cool season turf? Does it always include plug and in seed? Uh, no, Matt Lane, really, uh, a couple of things. One, decrease in soil temperature to rainfall uh, you know, or, or soil moisture. The, that is really what happens. So, you know, you can try and bring it out of dormancy any other way. So whatever you can do to cool the soil surface. Um, so, you know, if you want to start doing your uh, your flash waterings, your syringing waterings, um, drop the, the soil surface temperature faster, that may help. Um, plugging it may actually delay the come out of dormancy a little bit, summer dormancy. Um, so keep that in mind too, especially if it's really dry outside. Um, but if you've got a lot of rain forecasted and then you plug it and then it gets rained, you know, extremely heavily, that's going to help that perk have that cooling effect, which can speed it up. So the importance of timing that plugging there is 
prime when you know the lawn begins to come out of dormancy. But really and truly, there's not a whole lot you can do to make it come out of dormancy. There's going to be too much nature involved there. All renovations overseen in Fort Fescue in Virginia. How do I know it is a good time to start? Air soil temp. So, ah, that's a tough one. If you're sub 85 and sub 70 at night and you're in a cooling trend, I believe they call those cooling degree days, um, that is a good time to start. So um, for, you know, seeding, you know, typically like late August, early September, mid-September, late September, that window there is going to be prime time. Um, we've done seasons as you know early as you know the third week of August, and they've come out great. They're they're just more water intensive. Um, you know you have to make sure you may be watering six times a day at three minutes at a time versus four times a day at four minutes at a time. So you just have to play with it. But as long as you're in a cooling trend and under ninety degrees for the forecast, you should be good. It's spiked at 90 degrees after seeding before and it's all worked out okay. So, you know, don't hold it to that, but you know, that upper to mid 80 and, you know, starting to get cooler at night. And you got to think also in that time frame, your daylight hours are beginning to shorten and uh, that's going to help it cool faster at night as well. Bay State, yeah, that's like Malorganite. Found a cool free app to measure area field, uh, area measure free in the Play Store. Very cool, KD Zero. RBA Lonla, hey, you're welcome, man. Thank you, thank you, HD. How many overseas to get all the grass the same type when changing varieties? Uh, Myers, unless you're doing a complete kill off, who knows? It, I mean, really, it is possible to, to make that assumption. It's really hard to say. Is it harder to get centipede out of Bermuda or Bermuda out of centipede? It is harder to get centipede out of Bermuda. Oh, there's Ray chiming in. That's right. That's right. Need to bring my K up in my lawn. Just bring soil samples. I look sulfate upon it. Look, Ray's going to help you there. Half pound of K per app now until fall. Too much K will salt burn, then leach out. That's right. That's right. And be careful using, if you do have to use the 0060, be careful because uh, that one tends to be a little saltier a lot saltier than your sulfate of potash. High quality heat tolerant KBG. I don't, I don't know a lot of Kentucky bluegrass. I only have 100 PGJ heads. Mm, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of about irrigation, but my man Ray does. Got a soil test and they show the parts per million for P and K, but no recommendation on the PPK. Uh, how do I treat? Uh, Esther, what is your grass type? I mean, there's a lot of different ways to answer that. Um, so typically, you know, you can hop on like the GCSAA website and it's going to be um, uh, geared more towards superintendents, but um, they got pretty good soil test data there for interpreting your P and K levels. Uh, they, they should tell you that, but you, you should you should be able to Google recommended soil test requirements and then insert your turf grass name and find some some pretty good samples there of where you should be Spray microgreen and humic 12 yesterday threw in a kicker to ban cs insecticide in there too start control the bugs from at a rate of 0.2 ounces per thousand there you go i just ordered the bio stem pack from long care any success stores from idaho utah areas lots of soil compactor in open area will help uh ty just to give you a heads up, John Perry developed the product in Utah um, with Kentucky Bluegrass Utah area in mind. So lots of success stories down there. Like the whole the whole, the whole BioStimpact impact success is based out of Utah. Uh, hey man, Brown Patch seems to thrive here with such hot, humid temps here in Iowa lately. True to profit comes all once the label rate. Do I need to keep treating every twenty eight or just ride it out? Um, I would switch it up rather than just going with propiconazole at label rate because eventually you're going to have a point of diminished return where the propiconazole isn't going to be as effective and in fact have a detriment to the overall health of the turf. So I would switch it up to something else, even if it's like thiophanate methyl or something, or you know the clarity is 33, 36, um, something just to switch it up if you want to continue doing it. Um, what is this? Trying to figure this out here. This is not. 
I'm not going. Damn it, Legas, what's up? Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, hang on one second. Let me get down there and I will answer your question. Um, I don't want to lose my spot up here. Let's see. What's good? Alternative 2100 for Liquid App. We are looking at, at least 10 straight days with 100 degree temps in Dallas Fort Worth. Woo! There you go. Look at Ray. That's right. There's nothing. Ammonium sulfate would be great. But I, I don't know what your, your soil pH is in Dallas Fort Worth. I know in West Texas, typically you have high pH and uh, pretty, pretty funky soil. But um, what is good? Steve Willie, what are you doing? Stop that, Steve. Stop it. Man, Steve, what did I tell you about that, dude? I told you on the phone the other day. I'm liable to drive up there and get you in a bear trap. That's right, Brian. <laughs> Brian, just drop your overall ammonium sulfate rates and up your uh, application frequency. So, yeah, you can still spray AMS. Um, a good alternative for a liquid app, man. I, I mean, really, you don't have a whole lot of options. I mean, you could do methylene urea or triazone urea. Um, good luck with that. Um, or you could do just straight urea, or you could do urea and agrotane, or urea and disinamide, uh, or you know, urea and the n butyls, Umax, Uflex, that kind of stuff. But not really a whole lot of other options. I guess you could do like potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate is going to be extremely salty, though, so be very careful with that. You could do calcium nitrate. Um, that's going to be pretty hot, too, because that's nitrate, nitrogen, so that's, that's pretty hot. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's really about it. Not a ton of options there. Mike, you know my lawn is my passion when having family dinner with yourself. <laughs> Mike, you don't need to do that. <laughs> Any recommendations for fertilizing a passion with buffalo grass? Myers, I don't know a lot about buffalo grass. I was talking to a guy in Texas not too, too long ago about buffalo grass. Um, and it seemed like, you know, there wasn't really a whole lot that needed to be done with it. So I don't know, maybe Ray can chime in on that or anybody else in the group that's from Texas can talk a little bit about buffalo grass. But um, I think it tolerates fertilizer okay. I honestly can't remember. Myers, if you don't mind, shoot me an email, thegrassfactor at gmail.com. And uh, when I get a little downtime, I'll do some research on it and touch base with you. Launch rights. I did some research on humic acid seed cup, but I really wasn't sure how long or how many apps to see results. I applied each at one ounce per gallon per 1,000 square feet. Lawn stripes, bear with me after the show. I'll send you the test data that came out of Virginia Tech. And it talks about the window at which they applied and then how they got the additional 70% root mass over a certain period of time. It's in that trial. So I'll share that with you. Uh, looks like I have dollar spot, leaf spot, and brown patch. They all look the same to me. How can you tell the difference? Use headway, Zoxia Strobel label says it won't work on dollar spot. Um, really, it's all in the shape of the lesion. So if you look at dollar spot lesions, they look like an hourglass. Leaf spot, you typically only see when it's cool outside, like a little bit warm during the day and cool at night. So it's actively growing almost too much, but it, the, uh, it's not evaporating fast enough. And so you tend to get leaf spot at that time. Again, dollar spot has more of an hourglass lesion and brown patch lesions don't typically go across the entire length of the blade. Um, you get these real, like, just nasty, um, how, do, how, do you, how do you describe, almost got, like, black edges, you know, on it. And it's just, it's real nasty. If I could post a picture, I'd show you. Um, and you may be looking at brown patch and just confusing it with dollar spot because I'm looking at a picture of a brown patch lesion right now. And I can see where that could be confused with dollar spot. And again, typically, if you're dealing with things that are the size of like this, that's dollar spot. If you're dealing with a bigger patch, that's brown patch. If you're dealing with little patches like this that's cooking it straight to the ground dead, that's probably dead. And given how hot it is, you're going to be dealing with heat, hot, heavy heat, hot related diseases. So typically those are going to be brown patch and pythium. I would bet that there's not a lot of dollar spot, especially leaf spot out there right now. Please, what's up my man? 
Welcome to the shizzle. James Chavez. Hey, check it out, my man. Superior Virginia has been hitting hotter than August lately and bone dry. Yeah, man, that's brutal. Um, it's been the been the same here. September has been awful. Uh, Matt, do you like Kentucky bluegrass or putting on rye or 50-50 mix? I like Kentucky bluegrass, Ronald Parrish. Put kids to bed. Hey, thank you, good sir. We have a dollar spot near as well. I'm with Perfect Circles about this size. Been pretty warm and irrigate only in early mornings. Orbit, what's up? Orbit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I don't know, man. You may be dealing with it. Where are you at? I'd be curious. I look at your temperatures there. Uh, are you just when temps are over 85? What about late in the evening, early in the morning before it gets too hot? Uh, it's not so much the heat um, of the day that influences the RGS. It's the, it's the amount of growth hormonal effect on the plant. And when it's hot and it's trying not to grow to conserve water, and then you smash it with hormones that are telling it to send out shoots, um, that's going to cause it to tap the plant for a lot of water when there may not be a lot of water there. So. Doing it in the morning or evening may not be necessary. So instead of going for now, you know, like now when it gets to be really hot outside, John did a wonderful video about this. When you're dealing with heat. It's a great time to focus on your micronutrients because the micronutrients will keep that barrel full as far as your nutrients are concerned. And that way you'll still continue to get the color um, without having to push for uh, substantial growth. Is it okay to apply the next biostimulant products to dormant tall fescue, currently in Northern Virginia? Um, Eduardo, yes, sir. You're not going to hurt anything. That's for sure. That is for sure. Uh, <laughs> Southeast Louisiana is smoking, man. Wow. Oh, dang it. Back up here. Uh, Myers, I do not know. Is it a good... Uh, Jeremy Lagasse. Okay, so... My zombies grow for, for tall fescue. I assume you're talking about tall fescue. We'll, we'll talk about either tall fescue or um, uh, what is the other one? Kentucky bluegrass. Your best bet is you're going to have to balance your fertility with the genetics of the plant. You capitalize on the genetics of the plant three ways. Water, light, Fertility. So if, if there's enough sunlight, photosynthesis is going to be taking place, right? Assuming you're not too hot. Um, if photosynthesis is taking place at an accelerated rate, then you're going to have a, a pretty good water usage from the plant. And then to make sure that you're getting peak efficiency out of your plant, you want to focus on things like micronutrients, making sure your micronutrient levels are good. Um, then on the other part of that, um, you know, using something to keep it in a perpetual state of aggressive growth, um, you can use something like kelp. Maybe drop your rates and spoon feed, quote unquote, your kelp um, to make sure you're at peak efficiency from the plant. So uh, the other things you could do, you could experiment with like foliar apps of diammonium phosphate or something like that. Um, Again, that's keeping that shoot uh, growth alive. Uh, but really, it's all about carbohydrate storage, which plays into photosynthesis, which would be light. Um, it's a good rule for breeding it. If it's above 90 degrees, don't cut it. I haven't cut it for two weeks, and it looks like the best grass on the block. Uh, the ugly patches need to fill in. Um, the best rule for Bermuda is if you're not going to water it, don't cut it. So it doesn't really matter the temperature. If you're watering regularly, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you can cut it. But if you're not going to water regularly, then don't cut it. Because every time you cut, you effectively cut water out of the plant, water that's used to keep that crown of the plant alive. Mr. Efficiency, what's going on up there in the Northeast, my man? Green and materials are flowing consistently and clog free. You know they are, buddy. You know they are. As long, Hey, as long as you got the breakthrough agitator, you know all is good in the world. I'm in Northern Virginia, just at Air 802 Microgreen app, and lawn is thriving. That's good to hear. Yes, sir. Use potassium nitrate, 13045. Ray has no fear. He's willing to get it done. What's up, Kevin from South Knoxville? Awesome, man. Glad your son's there. What's up, Jeremy W? How are you? Good, sir. 
How should I go about renovating a yard without an irrigation system? This is a very large area, so I know I don't know about using standard hose sprinklers. Jonathan Shaheen, um, you probably want to use something like a wetting agent or something like Aquasorb or Seed Aid, and it's all about timing, right? So timing it with good, consistent, long rainfalls, um, and then protecting the seed. So something. Seed aid offers a layer of protection, protect that seed, keep the moisture in. Um, or you could use something like moisture manager, which again is going to suck atmospheric water out as well as be activated by water and keep it right there in the root zone. Um, you can use a traditional wetting agent. Don't use a penetrant. So I like duplex, which is designed to shoot through the soil. Uh, you want something that'll kind of hang out at the surface there. There's another product called Aquasorb tended to be used on the tree market. That works really well as well. So there's options to do it, but really it's all about timing. Long tribes don't get silly over there. The K and Air 8 and Micro in particular are probably pretty helpful. The only one I might avoid the RGS. I've heard the plant hormones will cause stress on dormant turf. Um, I don't think it's going to stress dormant turf any more than it already is. Um, I would be more concerned is if like, you know, for instance, my front yard that I'm not watering and uh, I'm not able to mow it. So if I came in and lit it up with a high rate of RGS, I'd say I could ding it pretty decently. Uh, Nick Van Allen, I need help. I'll follow some of your advice and I already put Brent two rounds of 24D in the spring. Now my lawn is covered with Virginia buckwheat. What can I use? Nick Van Allen, you can switch to something like Four Speed XT, Escalade 2, Momentum FX2. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Anything with fluoroxapyr in it, and uh, you'll be good to go. Or a tr triclopyr or fluoroxapyr. Uh, what is it? Cool Power, Horsepower. Uh, probably not Horsepower, actually, but Cool Power. Um, that whole new farm line, which is Escalade 2, Cool Power, Four Speed XT. Um, all of those will work. Do you have lots of screaming, grass daddy? Lots of screaming. You have any experience with Aquamax fescue seed? I do not. That sounds like a coated fescue seed. I uh, never used it. Uh, hey, so aside from cost to effort, what's the downside of fungicide apps? Is there a reason not to do a preventative for a cool season transition lawn? I assume fungicides are bad for the soil ecosystem. Uh, Nathan, that's kind of a myth. So. There are some fungicides that are going to be harder on soil microbiology than others. Um, you know, so you have to look at what the actual, um, what you're typically dealing with. So if you're dealing with true like fungi, which is, and that's what you're inhibiting is the development of fungi, um, then it's probably not going to have as big of an effect on uh, other forms of biology like, like microbes. I know I, I read a pretty in-depth study that they did on the effect azoxystrobin and propiconazole and a few other different fungicides had on the soil microbe count. And it did have an effect, but it was usually a really quick dip with very quick recovery. Um, because again, fungicides are attacking fungi, not necessarily you know things like microbes, or it may have only a slight impact on bacteria. So uh, keep that in mind. That you know the the downside really is the cost. Um, so yeah, there you go. Look at this. My buddy John Pinkerton is helping me out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug this now and see if I can get this to load. Um, we are at the point now where I kind of feel comfortable showing off the website for Carbon Earth Company, which is going to be uh, the new company that is manufacturing the fertilizer. I'll post a link in the chat. If you would, Go to the website, sign up for the newsletter, and I will keep you personally up to date with everything that's going on with that. So I put it in the chat, sign up, I'll shoot you an email, I'll say hey to you, I'll say what's up, and uh, it's a good, easy way for you to keep up to date. And I'm, I'm really excited to tell about all the positive things that are going on with it. So 
Uh, if you want a little bit of the insider information of what's going on with the new fertilizer, sign up. Bam. Um, more so, and not necessarily for the soil ecosystem either, Nathan, uh, you'd be more concerned about potential for it to run off into water. All right, all right. Buffalo grass, do not push it with FERT. Do not apply herbicides without reading the label. There you go. I was wrong about the fertilizer. Keep it off. Let it be. Usually sit pretty neutral on pH in Dallas Fort Worth, six to seven for the most part. What point on the acidity scale is a good idea to start correcting with lime? I would say sub six. Um, my I like my pH is typically around five eight to six five. If I'm over 6.5, I'm trying to drop it as fast as I can. If I'm under 5.8, I begin to think about getting the pH back up. You talk a bit about quack grass. seems to be exploding in Michigan this year. Zach's, man, unfortunately, there's not a lot to say about quack grass. It is what it is. Um, and unfortunately, you know, you have to do everything you can to try and get your cool season grass established as much as possible to give it a fighting chance against the quack grass. Keep the quack grass mode. Don't let it go to seed. Round up it if you got to and reestablish. There's just not a whole lot to do about it. Do you have any recommendations for cool season turf that will survive daily softball practice? I have Kentucky bluegrass or had, should I say. Um, where are you located, MCJ? I signed up, but it doesn't appear to work. Oh, Chris Void, it does, it does, it does. Um, it didn't mean it was that. <laughs> Steve, you did not insult me. Don't be silly, man. Don't be silly. What's up, Prattville, Alabama? It's down there in the farmland. Change up has been smoking Virginia buttonweed for me. Woo! There we go. I'm answering these backwards right now. Hang on. Let me let me move on back up here. Oh, and the survey website. Everyone go to <laughs> your uh, carbonlawns.org. So we are looking at the idea of essentially a trade organization that's united around lawn care applicators and talking about the positive things lawn care applicators do for the environment. It, oftentimes it gets overlooked that it's, ah, I'm sorry, I'm reading this and trying to talk at the same time. <laughs> We get painted in a very negative light, and it's not fair because environmentally, what we do for the environment is we sequester atmospheric carbon dioxide, the green, the major greenhouse gas everybody talks about. So, you know, we do really and truly an acre of turf grass consumes three times as much atmospheric carbon as an acre of forest. That's a stat you can't argue with, and that's an impressive stat. And I don't know. I'm super passionate about this and I could talk about it forever. And I just, I'll plug that, take that uh, survey for me, please. That would just help a lot. And it's just a little bit of data we need. When does Carbon X come out to the public? I don't know, Ronald Parrish, when it'll be available to homeowners. Not sure yet, uh, but it'll be 2019 for sure. Probably see on fungicides being, uh, uh, the fungicides there are very organism specific. There you go. Uh, is there a Carbon Earth social media I can follow? Actually, yes, there is. You can follow us on Facebook. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, Carbon Earth. Oh. Oh, I found it. Yeah, check us out on Facebook, too. Click like. Say something on there, just so that way we know you exist. I mean, is I am. It's in the chat. Thank you, John Bakerton. You're the best. Uh, Carl says, why does it take Carbon X so long to produce and get to the shelves? Is it just so much behind the scenes things that need to be set up? Yeah, um, Carl, we are manufacturing everything from the ground up. Buildings, the lead time on the equipment we're using. I mean, if you, the amount of money we're spending on equipment is, is a giant number. And, you know, so a lot of these pieces of equipment you know, take, you know, 14 weeks to even manufacture the equipment. Then they manufacture that equipment and then they have to ship it to where we're going to be in Kentucky and then put it all together there for the final assembly. 
So that's what takes so long is the manufacturing of the equipment that we're going to be using to manufacture the fertilizer because a lot of the equipment we're using is custom built specifically for what we're doing. I have a breakout of a little yellow flower with clover-like leaves in the portion of my lawn, but not sure what it is or what to use, broadleaf spray maybe. Yeah, ta uh, Tracker, probably what you're dealing with is either uh, black medic or yellow wood sorrel, uh, one of the others. And yes, those are difficult to control. Um, one of the things you can do with a broadleaf spray is add something like sulfentrazone to it. A lot of times that sulfentrazone will give you that added kick to knock it out. The other thing you could use is something that contains triclopyr, but given the time of year it is, I would probably stay away from it. Use a little dismiss as a kicker and call it good. Well, organized is me. <laughs> Matt, what causes light green areas of Bermuda in some places and darker in others? Completely random too. It's not first or anything like that. Water coverage is uniform too. Soil test needed. It could be two different types of Bermuda grass that you're dealing with. One could be hybrid, one could be common. The other thing could be variations in soil pH in the two different areas. So one may be at like a seven. The other one may be like a seven, eight. And the iron uptake in the area that has a seven, eight pH is not going to be anywhere near at the rate it would be at a seven. So at a seven, that circle or whatever the shape may be, it's going to uptake way more iron and give you much better color than it would in the area just next to it with a seven, eight. That may be in a patch-like area. It could be uh, aggregate underneath, like limestone aggregate that's beginning to leach into the soil and causing that pH. So there's a lot of different issues at hands there. <clears throat> I could bluegrass riding midnight heat tolerant. That's my, I don't know, someone in the chat might know though. All, <laughs> that's a good answer, Chris Boy. All KBG is heat tolerant if you water it right. My cooperative extension office says not to fertilize turf type tall fescue after March 15th, but Milo says otherwise. Do I listen to the people at North Carolina State or the manufacturer of the fertilizer products? Paul Mancioni. Man, that's the million dollar question. Um, <laughs> look at Ray. Listen to North Carolina State. For, forget the people at Milorganite. Um, yeah, that's one of those things where the people at Milorganite, you know, they have an idea for their program and why their program works. Um, and it's all about being gentle. Like, you know, Milorganite is always just going to be super gentle. And uh, and that's why it is what it is. <clears throat> Paul, I also encourage you to look at the further research that shows the instances of brown patch that occur based on your fertilizer application dates. And those that have not been fertilized after March 15th had the exact same amount of brown patch as those that were fertilized in March. I typically don't fertilize after April, uh, and that's just me personally where I'm at. And I can't tell the difference between, in fact, one of the things I'm testing right now is I just put a pound of nitrogen down about three weeks ago of straight ammonium sulfate on the other side of my fescue yard, and it still looks perfect, flawless. So um, kind of interesting thing there. Let's see, when is the best time to machine aerate southern grass in Centipede, Louisiana? And would you apply sulfur, gypsum, compost for high pH and high sodium? Uh, I would not apply compost, that's for sure. Uh, but sulfur and gypsum, yeah, well, I guess, oh yeah, if you got the high sodium, I would apply gypsum first and then come back after the fact and apply your sulfur. Um, and you want to machine aerate when it's actively growing. Let's see here, image is labeled for buttonweed. And it depends on the type of image. Keep that in mind. If it's um, uh, atrazine, you know, be, be careful with that. It's not going to kill buttonweed. But if it's uh, amaziquin, it, it might. I haven't used amaziquin in so long. I can't remember. Um, let's see here. Oh man, hang on. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get caught up here. I have to fly through this. Uh, Matt just had everyone leave the channel because he posted it. <laughs> Best order fuselade. Looking forward to packing that Dallas grass with a combo of platex and flip flop. <laughs> That's pretty good. 
what is the what's the GDPR consent for the newsletter, Matt? Um, I don't know. Oh, it's because of that new rule in um, in goodness gracious, what is it in 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 Europe about the privacy and things that. Even if you sign up for a newsletter, like you still have to consent to receive the emails from them. So that, that's probably what that is. I don't know. Uh, what can I use to kill POA in Kentucky bluegrass? Ethofumisate, Frank Y. Ethofumisate, also known as POA constrictor or prograss. Hello from Southeastern Kentucky. What's up, Kevin Lee? How are you? Good, sir. I love Bermuda grass, John. I think you'd be proud of it. There we go. I uh, can't wait. Hey, thanks, Dylan. I appreciate it. That John Ware is the man. He is the man. Will liquid iron affect pH? Um, at a high enough rate, but probably not. Sign up the carbon. What is the approximate analysis uh, of the carbon X will be? So we'll have three different versions of carbon X. You haven't defined what each of those will be. So there will be one that will be like a 2006, maybe a 1905. Um, and then there will be another that's like a 829 or a 929. And then we'll have another that's like a 322. Uh, those, will be the, those will be the main ones. Uh, I mostly use Celsius here for broad spectrum weed control in North Texas, mostly because we have a lot of St. Aug, Bermuda mixed lawns. There are cheaper, cheaper chemical to treat broadleaf weeds on lawns here. Brian Land, not that I would recommend. Um, you know, you could do something like metsulfuron methyl, but that is going to be really hard on St. Augustine. And if you have any trees around, you're likely to kill them pretty quickly. So Celsius, unfortunately, is going to be about as good as you can get. Uh, took pictures. I need to know mentally. Uh, I had dollar spot last year and it looks exactly like I had this year. All right, thank you. Thank you for getting that out. I will take a look at those after the show. All right, let's see here. What would you suggest to do besides rescalping in the middle of the year with Bermuda? I scalped a 0.25, have maintained a 0.55 or so. Now I'm seeing what I believe is lots of scalping. What else can I do? Scalp it and water the fire out of it, Kevin. That's about it, my friend. That is about it. Uh, if you're getting to that point, chances are you're applying way too much fertilizer too quickly. I would dial back your rates and increase your frequency and dial your rates back significantly. So. If you're applying like a pound a month, drop it to like a half pound a month. If you're applying a half pound a month, drop it to a quarter pound a month and do it in like 16 uh, 16ths of a pound increments the whole way through. Uh, I could take a bluegrass here, temps in the 90 for weeks, but no rain. An additional quick 15 minute water in the afternoon really help with the heat stress. I just started doing that recently. I've been impressed. There you go. Midnight is good heat tolerance. Oh, there we go. We got, we got your Kentucky bluegrass help in there. Happy Monday, Mark Raymond. I did, man. I had a great weekend. Twice a day, and it's early morning. Wow. That's so much the risk of brown patch. New study says no effect, but pushing fescue in the heat doesn't work so good. Milo isn't going to push it that much. Man, that's a good point, Paul. Oh, man, dude, just brought us small yellow flowers. Uh, I have a purslane infestation that I've been able to control. What do you suggest? I've tried 2,4-D dicamba. Well, Clark, nothing has worked. James Chavez, I would use something that contained. Uh, fluoroxapir, so the ones I talked about earlier, Momentum FX2, um, Battleship 3, uh, Escalade, uh, Cool Power, all of those should work. Horsepower, I think horsepower will work. Yeah, it should work. Uh, let's see here. What's your answer for people who fall in love with Milo? Uh, go for it. It's, e it's easy. Dylan, here's the thing. I don't have any issue with Milo. It's it's a if it gets people excited about their yawn, I'm a fan of it. I think I think it's great because I love that people take an interest in improving their lawn. Uh, because ultimately, the more you learn about taking care of your lawn, the more you can do with it, the better things you can do. Again, that contribute to that carbon farm concept with a lawn. And ultimately, that you know, listen, I have been a spray guy for a really long time. And I will tell you that spray guys' reputations in the community is low. I mean, really, really, really low. And I dedicated my career, everything I do to prove the value behind why I do what I do. 
And so there's a whole litany of scientific data behind what we do. And so I became committed to teaching that scientific data so it can arm us with the proper answers and the proper information where we're confronted with these people that act like we're the scum of the earth. Because again, in reality, we do more for global warming by maintaining highly performing turf grass, even taking into account the hidden carbon costs of mowing lawns, watering lawns, applying fertilizer, three times that of forests. So for people to say that we're out there causing problems, they're wrong. And someone needs to be the voice of reason and tell them they're wrong. How about that for a soapbox? My goodness, I got angry. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see hey matt uh would you risk verticutting and core air aerating eh, some north texas bermuda grass finally have some time to spread some sand uh there ain't no risk get it done brew night man get it done just make sure you got either rain in the forecast or you can dial the water up but no sir get it done 715 where you are in, eh, in north texas i ah, get it done get it done don't have good growth in october any seed suggestions for deep shade in Ohio? Joe K, are you North Ohio? If you're North Ohio, I would go with a high-performing perennial ryegrass, like a uh, like a double eagle or something. Actually, a claim recommendation for my Bermuda infestation, but it's not for the fan of hard time. <laughs> That's right, Nathan. It's really not. It is not. Um, would vertical cutting work in lieu of rescalping? Oh, there it would. Yes, it would. With them apples. Uh, chain spray guys value is low, but local spray guys is high around here. Yeah, yeah. Tell the Coleman, what's up, my man? How are you? Good, sir. Hey, you have a good rest of the night, Fabian. You have a good rest of the night. All right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, all right. I made it to the end of the chat. I am. Look at this guy. Jeremy, <laughs> what are you doing, sir? Man. Uh, would will we be able to place bulk orders of carbon X in 2019? If not, guesstimate. Yes, Jeremy. For the commercial applicators, carbon X will be available for bulk purchase in 2018. And if you sign up for the newsletter, I'll give you an update on that information as far as when we're going to start taking um, start taking orders for it. So yes, absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy. I really appreciate it. New, David Borden, the new office is doing great. It's good to see your name in here. Uh, <laughs> David Borden is one of the engineers we have in the development of Carbon X. So everybody left in the chat right now, 137 of you, everybody give David Borden a shout out and tell him thanks for doing what he's doing because if it wasn't for him, there's no way we would have made it this far. So big thanks to him. Thank you, good sir. You're welcome, HD Movie Source. All right, everybody. I'm going to call it. It's 857. I got to get ready, get going. And uh, I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in. This has been a ton of fun. I love that the live stream is growing. It's really getting out there. And that gets me super freaking excited. There's Jim Beveridge in there. He's hanging around in here. I see that name. All right, everybody. I got to get going. Y'all have a great night. I'll see you this week. At some point, I'm going to have some super sweet content being recorded while I'm out on the road. I appreciate it, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. I love all of you. Thank you so much. Y'all, take it easy. Maybe I'll figure out how to end the live stream. All right, I got it. I